Welcome to the A Minute to Midnight Show. Folks, this is Tony coming to you from New Zealand. And just before I open up, I want to warn people that, you know, we've been facing censorship and our YouTube channel, one of my latest videos, was taken down um, through censorship. We do have a Rumble channel and a BitChute channel, um, but also make sure you're subscribed to a minute to midnight.com. Like go down the right hand side of our website and enter your email address. That way you'll get notified of all of our shows and videos and um, mostly YouTube would just have to put trailers up but you'll find them on all those platforms and also audio on Apple podcasts so it's uh, my great pleasure actually um, to have two guests on the show today that anybody that has been following A Minute to Midnight for any length of time will remember a Minute to Midnight at one point was a team and my two guests that are on today were part of the team and so it's really awesome just to have a, at least a one-off show together. It's been so long since we've done one and my friends Brooke Ardwin and Joni Stahl are on with me today so it's awesome for the three of us to be doing this together. Welcome. Well I cannot... I think there's no words to actually describe how this really feels right now. I'm like ridiculously overjoyed. It means so much to me. It's incredibly meaning um, just to see your faces. And uh, it's just awesome. Yes. Thank you so much, Tony, for having us, which almost sounds so strange to, to say after having been part of a, a minute original a minute to midnight team for so long up until the last couple of years but um yes thanks so uh, it's so good to be back together and um let god roll with it right <laughs> yeah totally totally agree and look folks we but let's be honest so many people are going through a really difficult time for many people the challenges that we're facing are unprecedented in this current you know world situation which well you know i make videos on it all the time i'm not going to go into lots of details in this video because many of you can just see the other videos i do talking about you know the big v situation and uh, yeah other things that are going on with transhumanism and all kinds of stuff but people are losing their jobs through their stances censorships happening big time um so people are financially struggling, people are going through marriage difficulties, people are going through all sorts of things, you know, worrying about their mortgages and, you know, the, the, I could go on and on. But basically, I think there's a lot of people that need encouraging um, because it is an unprecedentedly difficult time for many and it's not going to get any easier. So I think in this video, we hope to, well, be able to bring a bit of encouragement to everyone else as well as each other. So that's the gist of this show. So Joni, I'll just throw it to you to start. Yeah, you know, everything you said is exactly uh, on point, you know, and Brooke and I, well, you know, we were talking last night and we were talking this morning and, uh, you know, there were some private things we're not going to share, but we were talking about uh, being in the place of impossible, facing a future you can't see. Mm. And it's, these are different times. It's not like 1970, 1980, 1999, whatever, you know, it's, it's um, there, at least we could look forward to certain things and that's just not the case anymore. And I mean, at the beginning of the show, I mean, you said a few things that pretty much in a nutshell are uh, giving everybody intense anxiety, living in suspense. Um, I have people that write to me quite often talking about the fact that they're scared. Uh, they don't know what their future is going to look like. Everything is hanging on the balance. And so what's important for us to really focus in on today is to point away while we're in this world, but to point away to the other world and to really keep our eyes fixed. You know, it says in the word, my heart is fixed, O Lord, my heart is fixed. I will sing and I will give praise unto you. And so when you fix your eyes on something, it's almost like this, um, if I may, you know, when you follow something or you, you follow someone, 
you be you take on what that thing is you adapt to that personality to that belief um whatever you follow in essence you become so when you spend a lot of time in this world i, I, I don't mean we're in this world but we're not of this world but when there's a lot of uh terror and fear because real circumstances are happening um that is when we are looking at sometimes for some of us if I may use a term, standing between the soldiers and the sea. And that was a terrifying thing for those people. And there's a lot of people right now that are terrified. And so, Brooke, why don't you go ahead and give your thoughts on some things that we well, talked about? I'll, let me just say this to start off for um, many uh, of many listeners out there may not know, many will know who've, who's been with us for a long time. Um, Joni and I, a couple of years ago, we, um, we started a little, a little side channel off of a minute to midnight, um, where we, we solely focused on the Lord and, um, it was called fire and freedom. And, um, for those that don't know, um, uh, we did it for, for so many months and it was really starting to pick up and going great. And, um, Joni and I, um, uh, through actually uh, a, a third party, um, you know, we, we, we had a falling out and, um, literally overnight went from best friends and working partners to not speaking again so um we're talking about god being a god of the impossible so i just want you listeners to know out there that this is a situation that seemed impossible because it wasn't two months it wasn't two weeks we didn't speak but we're talking two plus years and um you know i couldn't wait to share with tony um uh, Joni emailed me and listen, it, it, it was, it didn't matter. Nothing that happened in between those two years made a difference. Um, like I told her, I love you. Uh, I, I, I just love you and I miss you. And there's, you know, you're, you're priceless to me. And, um, and we have started from there and it has been as if nothing ever happened, literally like there was no time missing. And I want to use that for what um, earlier uh, I was texting Joni saying that I really wanted to let the audience know that it's the same with God, that no matter no matter what we do, no matter what goes on, no matter if we end up falling, backsliding, turning from God, no matter what it is, or just no matter if we're not living up to our potential as we should be in our walk, whatever happens, God will start from today. When, when we just turn back to him, ask forgiveness, it is like none of it happened. And yes, we do not have to beat ourselves up <laughs> over and over for what we may have failed at, what we did or didn't do, because there's no reason doing that. God knows um, he'll teach us a lot through it. Um, hopefully, that's what you want to do. You want to learn from it. And um, he's going to start from where you're at. And um, um, I personally, uh, another thing about us, everyone knows when we did shows together, um, Tony, Joni and I, from the beginning, God always told us to be authentic, to be real, to be raw. Um, we um, never put on airs. We always spoke about and just everything. And it was so amazing. Usually when we'd have a show, literally 99% of the time, um, we didn't have to uh, pray very long about what we'd speak about or ask the Lord. It, it was just incredible how 
we would speak and one of us would say, guess what happened to us, you know, within the last week or two. And literally it would be happening to the other two people on this mm. team, maybe a little bit different way, but, but it was literally the same. And we get on here and um, we definitely want to remain that way. Um, we are not perfect. Um, I never want anyone to be listening to me or any of us. I think going through struggles and thinking, gosh, I wish my life was just like theirs. It seems so perfect because it's not. And um, I've been gone um, quite a while. Um, I was running far and freedom by myself, well, at least the group page. And um, this last year has been very difficult, guys. Um, I won't say everything, but um, basically, um, I, I, I lost all my income because of COVID and, um, I ended up having to stop working because I got in a car accident for the first time in my life one year ago on February 27th, um, someone hit me. It was my fault. And only two months before that, I had dropped all compensation. So I only had liability. Um, and so that means, guess what? Yeah, the insurance wouldn't pay for my total car. So my car for one year has been sitting in my driveway. I have not been able to work. I have no family to borrow a vehicle from. And my last daughter who is living with me, uh, when I did get to borrow her car, she is now gone. <laughs> and she moved. Um, time for her to move on with her life in college. It was just easier. Um, she's like 45, 50 minutes away. So... It has been very, very difficult, needless to say. Um, I live in a town where I don't have bus service. You know, I can't take a bus to work. And um, so I don't have a ride to work. Um, and um, I am, I have been not too proud of myself several times over the last year because when, when I, I have been so alone in this house, and um, I'll just be honest with you guys, you know, um, you start thinking poorly about yourself. And when that starts happening, you can actually start believing it. And then depression, which I never had experienced before. I mean, I've been depressed and sad in the past, like, you know, when you're young and, and you lose like um, a companion, a boyfriend or girlfriend. You feel like, oh, you're depressed. No, no, no. I mean real depression. I, I didn't know what that was, especially being born again and serving God since 18. Um, I, I didn't even know it would be possible to go through something like that long term and then have thoughts and, and, and terrible thoughts of, you know, I, I'd be better off not even on this planet kind of thing anymore. So... COVID, which it couldn't be soon enough if we could not have to discuss that word anymore, but it, it's here and I'm afraid it's here to stay in the world. We'll never go back to what it was, but we're just here to tell you guys that um, we all go through it and Don't be too harsh on yourself. God will not abandon you no matter how you feel. Um, feelings are very tricky. Um, it's very, very difficult sometimes um, to wake up every day and get ourselves motivated, get ourselves praying, get ourselves in the word. Oh, there have been weeks that I didn't open my Bible, that I didn't pray. And I told Joni. I literally couldn't physically make myself do it. I was so down and felt like I had failed so tremendously that I was even questioning, am I even saved? Has God like washed his hands of me? Because things seem to go from worse to worse to worse. And in that process, I'll be totally honest. Um, one of the gifts that God gave me years ago um, especially through the miracle of my daughter being healed from severe autism, completely healed, 
has never shown a sign again or symptom. And now she's in her 20s and or 20. Well, <laughs> oh, I even lost my train of thought, guys. Well, I just I, I just I just want to jump in quickly and say, Basically, when you know, going way back when you two used to do shows together, and it were my wife Holly, you know, she used to listen to you guys and was so encouraged when she was going through a real hard time by what you two used to share. And then, of course, it was it was basically through talking to to you guys, especially Joni, and that that um, Holly and I ended up, you know, meeting and then, you know, I'd had Holly on the show and then eventually, you know, the people, a lot of people know the story, Holly and I got married. So really in a, in a way it's due to you too, that, that Holly and I even got together, which is really amazing, you know? And, um, so the, yeah, the, the fact is that we all do go through rough times. And like I said at the beginning, I think many of us are going through a real tough tough times and just without going back into into it but you know when when the split happened between you two and I was kind of in the middle of it in a way um and having to and stay friends with both of you even though neither of you were talking to each other and I try I'm you know attempted to maintain the friendship but independently and take ne nobody's sides and thank goodness you know here here it is worked out but I will say that I, I felt some real reservations about the third person that I think kind of was used as a, a um, used Very to bring so. the wedge in. And I won't go there, but, you know, there was something not right there. I'd felt it for a while. So, um, but here we are in this yeah. kind of situation. And um, I just, I just, before we go any further, because like I said, I know that people are going through all kinds of stuff difficult situations and many people are financially struggling and I'll be honest even a minute to midnight I'm noticing people that have been donating for a long time some of them have had to have emailed me and said we've lost our job we've lost our income we can't support you anymore and it's like god bless them I say still keep in touch with me you know to some of those people because they've been long term um, but obviously it's meant that a minute to midnight donations have gone down down the tube a bit lately too and I'm having to trust god and go okay god well you got us and, you know, you can get us through this. But I just, before we go any further, Brooke, do you have a um, a PayPal account that if people want to donate to help you get your car situation sorted and things that they can send you money directly? Uh, yes. Um, can yes, you tell thank them? Thank you. Can I do. I, I actually, I, I wasn't expecting that to come out. Thank you. I, um, I have it under my email, which um, is Haleybrook at seabridge.net, where you may want to put in the description, maybe. Um, yes, I'll put know, it in if you, yeah, I will, I'll, in the description yeah, to the video. Yeah, it's under my email, yeah. but it's not under my name. Once someone looks up my email, it's under Fire and Freedom, which is the name of, you know, the show. Um, but, but. When 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 you just uh, mentioned everything you spoke about, thank you so much, Tony. It it it, it reminded me of, of just what I wanted to say and, and let people know that even even mature Christians or someone people that are teams that have worked in ministry and um, love people and want to help people. You see, um, I ended up getting to a place that even though my gift was faith, got to a point where I lost faith and I lost hope. And that is frightening. Mm -hmm. And what I do know now, I have a very hard time, believe it or not, not with Joni or Joni. Um, I have a hard time reaching out and asking for help. And the, the, the Lord tells us in the word, you know, how we are to depend on the body. You know, we are to go to the body. But I always have this thought that everyone is going through so many problems and so many trials and struggles. Listen, they don't want to hear what I have to say. but. I'm mainly speaking, listen, 
we need each other, especially in times like this. There's so much darkness. There's so much evil. There's so much wickedness. Just little words of encouragement, a scripture here. Listen, you don't have to pray for 30 minutes. Just a little prayer and uplifting to the Lord. It can change someone's entire life. And it has a mind. So just to finish off, um, I'm not in that pit of despair. but. Um, it has taken my friends and even Joni, it's only been recently, um, because so much was lifted off of that. It's like so much joy was restored, you know, when you lose something so important to you and then you just, um, and I know it's been two years, but when you lose something that important, like I said, no one can replace that. Um, and it was meant, I told Joni last night, I said, I never thought I would tell you this. Never thought I'd be saying this. But now I am thankful that it took the amount of time it took for her to email me and all this to happen and forgiveness and restoration because he brought her back. In the perfect time. And isn't it just like God to do that? You know, sometimes we can't see it when we're going through it. And I know that everything that's going on with me personally as well, and anyone out there who's struggling with um, feeling like you losing your faith or lost your faith or hope or any of this, hey, feel free to message me. Feel free to email me. Uh, feel free to, if you can't find me, contact Tony. Um, Joni and I, we're going to be doing a show weekly on her channel now. So look, God is so good. And um, thank you, Tony, so much. I do appreciate that. Um, well, yeah, um, people. It makes me so I, I will put the, um, in the description um, your um, email and PayPal if people want to donate to you and also Joni's your channel um, as well. So, um, you know, I'll put all the options in, uh, that I can Thank in you. the description. And, yeah, I'd um, like to start a little business at home because these days, really with no car, um, you know, that's just my best option. Yeah, well, so so many people are going through struggles. I, I mean, it really is, like I say, people that have supported and been a Minute to Midnight followers for a long time, right from the beginning, yeah. some of them have had to say that we just can't, you know, help you anymore because we're really struggling and we can't work and we can't do this and that because they haven't taken the big V um, because, it, you know, many of us are going to stick to our guns, I believe, no matter what. There's just no way going to go bowing down to that and this system is going to get increasingly difficult for people like us and I think when you look at, well when Antichrist comes it says he'll wear down the saints, well I think that the goal of the elites that are already putting things into place is to wear us down and to get you know, everybody into their system and anyone that isn't in it, they will seek to wear us down. And Christianity is, true Christianity is obviously the big enemy of this. Um, and, you know, but we must keep our faith and we must keep our hope in the Lord. So, Joni, I, with having said that, I want to throw it to you now for your thoughts um, on, you know, where we're going with this. Well, you know, I will say, um, anyways, the first, well, before I get going on, what I want to say is um, I just really want to thank you, Brooke, for being open about your life. And, you know, I think that when we can be transparent like this, I mean, I, I, I would advise not to give out details, but mm -hmm. it opens the door for people uh, to say, uh, oh, good, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Because, see, the this world that we're living in, the enemy has a divide and conquer protocol. And so when he can get like how he got Brooke, he had me that way before some decades ago, a decade ago in my life, and some terrible things. Um, but I understood what it felt like, you know, to be stripped down and to lose everything, like literally everything, widowed, uh, not having a home to live in, only having, you know... <laughs> my ex-spouse deceased, you know, his truck and 
moving everywhere and working wherever I could just to make enough money to put in the gas to go work somewhere else. And, you know, but we have history and Christ has history. And what I, what I think is um, really important. It's, it's in one of my notes and I just love it so much. And, you know, I was thinking about, uh, and this I believe will have something to do with it. And I hope it'll speak to the hearts of people that are listening but, you know, when, when you look at Peter, and I shared this with Brooke yesterday, um, Amy Carmichael had said this, and I loved it so much. And because I, I want to talk about the life, okay? Because we are always people that are in the moment, especially if we are really, really going through something, okay? I mean, our hearts are palpitating. We're losing sleep at night. Look, I get it. I've been there. I've been there several times. So what I'm saying is not anything else, but what I personally experienced myself. But I like what you said on John 21, uh, in John 21, 18 through 19. And this is when Jesus had been resurrected and the seven remaining or those seven disciples on the shore went fishing. Uh, The six with Peter went fishing. They fished all night, caught nothing. Jesus is on the shore he asked them if they caught anything and so forth. We know the story. Anybody can read it. But it gets to the point where they all meet together on the shore. And uh, Peter's asked a few questions about whether he loves God or, you know, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Um, but then he goes on. The next thing he says after he hears, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And I like how she said, and this is her, I'm quoting, quote, when thou was young, but when thou shalt be old. She said, babes in Christ are nursed, not crucified. They have certain liberties. Quote, thou walkest whither thou wouldest. But when they grow up into spiritual manhood, all that is changed. And yet they would not go back to the other easier life. For they are never their lo- nearer their Lord now, for nearer than ever they were before. And we are on a journey home. This is not our home. And when we can not just conceptualize it, but realize this is reality for the believer, that we yeah, we have these things that are happening to us in our life that are overwhelming. But I know from experience this, um, God's word can never not be true. Um, he answers in his own style. Uh, he knows what to do. I think of the words in Lamentation chapter four, when P- when Jeremiah and he was looking back at the time when he was in the dungeon, um, in the well, when he was put into the well, and he sunk in the deep mire, and he said, uh, "Lord," he he said, "Lord, I cried out to you out of the low dungeon, out of the low dungeon." hear my voice, hold not thy voice at my crying, neither at my breath. And when I saw that in one time in my life, when I was so destroyed, and I mean, I was like Job, I was like a tree plucked up on every side, I was destroyed on every side. And when I saw that word, I couldn't pray. I was so like my soul was just destroyed from loss. And it was like a big atom bomb blew up in my life. And uh, I was like, just out of it. But I saw that word and it, it was the Lord saying to me, prayer is much more than what you think. It's not that you're going to have to accumulate like a dust pan and get on the floor and try to scoop up whatever you can. He said, look, I hear your breathing. It's enough for me. You know, it says in the word, it says, thou tellest all my wanderings. Thou puttest my tears into thy bottle. Are they not written in thy book? You see, because when he's talking about hold not thy voice at my crying, neither at my breath, at my breathing, neither at my cry. That's how it goes. Is because when we have a certain kind of tear, it's something greater than that we can speak. And and so what we have done with prayer is that we have compartmentalized it. We have made it something that can be tangible, something we can understand. You know, and I love something that uh, one of these old believers I love, and I won't say his name because it doesn't matter. He said, um, I don't 
understand because I believe I believe I don't believe because I understand I I understand because I believe and something happens in the life of the believer and I was thinking about uh, how every day of our life if every one of our hairs is numbered and we lose hair every day you know even if you're bald you still have hair on your body okay and I'm just being real because it has to speak to all people that if he can number your number all the hairs on your head and keep up with that every day, that he know, knows the number of your days, all the days ordained for me are written in your book before one of them come to be, that he has taken on the consequences of you obeying him. When you turn to him, that's all it takes. When you turn to him, it's not, you don't even have to feel anything. He already knows what you're feeling. And, um, and if I may, I do want to share one thing that I think is very important. And I wrote it down in my Bible. And it's from um, an old saint. And she said, she was quoting in her book, and I, I took a chunk out of it. And she said, a voice said, climb. And he said, how shall I climb? The mountains are so steep that I cannot climb. The voice said, climb or die. He said, but how? I see no way up those steep ascents. This that is asked is too hard for me. The voice said, climb or perish, soul and body of thee, mind and spirit of thee. There is no second chance for any son of man, climb or die. Then he remembered that he had read in the books of the bravest climbers on the hills of the earth, that sometimes they were aware of the presence of a companion on the mountains who was not one of the earthly party of the climbers. And he remembered a word in the book of mountaineers. It heartened him for it told him that he was created to walk in precarious places and not on the easy levels of life. Because you see, God says in Job chapter five, and I want to open it up to that right now because it's important for us. We want the word. We want Jesus to speak to us. Um, and he says here in Job five, he says, verse 19 he says, he shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shall not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, like as a shock of corn cometh in his season. Lo, this we have searched it, so it is, hear it, and know thou it for thy good. And so we're, how I take it from God, what he's saying, he shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. In other words, he's saying, is there anybody willing to go through this with me? Because you see, God uses our lives to speak to the lives of people outside. So when you look outside of yourself, you're seeing that God is speaking to the world in your life. They're looking at you like, look, she or he is destroyed. They have nothing left. What are they going to do? They don't, they're not educated or if they have an education, they're not able to work. And all these people in a humanistic way are looking at the life of the believer, right? And the life of a believer is developing their talent in prayer. Because the character is developed in the stream of life. That's why we got to be in the middle of the midst of the stream of life. He's developing us. But the talent is worked out in the prayer room. And so when you go to him in prayer, it's not like, you know, you know what I say? Throw away all your books that are trying to tell you how to pray. You know what the greatest thing you're ever going to pray is the greatest thing and the thing that's in your heart. That's where Christ resides. That's how God already knows what you have need of before you ask. And it's not just that you need something here or something there. He's saying, I know what you have need of, meaning not your grocery bill, not your light bill, not a job. There's things about you that I know that you have need of. 
And that is maybe patience. You have need of trusting me. You have need. And so when we go through these awful, horrible trials, humanistically, we're going to start like, you know, like you think of the road runner, you see the wheels on the side of his body, he's burning rubber, he's trying to get away and see, this is what we do. But as you get older, I've noticed in my older age that things move a lot slower now for me, things go slower. Okay. And because of our, and I know both of you and I know your lives and nothing's going to be said about it, but I'm just saying, I know your lives. I know mine. Okay. We're not here by any you know, yeah, I think I'll do a video. It's like, no, uh, we, we are people in our prayer closets. We must be okay. And, but in it, we really don't realize the years that we've accumulated, even in that prayer closet, in the tears, in the, in this, you know, because it says it has been in, in uh, uh, first Peter chapter one twenty nine. it says, for it hath been granted unto thee on the behalf of Jesus Christ, not only to believe on his name, but to suffer for his sake. And that may be something people don't want to hear, but see, God doesn't like we we're talking yesterday. God doesn't leave you in ashes. See, our life is ashes. Ashes are the result of something destroyed, burned up. You can never have it again. But when we give him those ashes, he says, I'll give you purpose in life. It's my job. It's me, not his job. God doesn't have a job. It's him giving us purpose. Because it says in Ecclesiastes 3, it says, for there is a purpose for every season, for, you know, for everything, for every season of God under heaven. And so what I want to say is that God knows exactly what is happening to us, but it is okay. And you should say, Lord, I cry unto thee daily, you know, in the day of my trouble, answer me speedily. Send forth your word. And you know what? I'll tell you, when you just get rid of those books, and I say that personally because I remember years in my life, and I've always been a prayer person, but then I wanted to be like, oh, I want to know what this person says, and this master says, and this master says. And you want to know what? I thought my greatest prayers I ever prayed were when everything burned up around me. And then I got to his heart. So, Joni, um, as we're kind of getting towards wanting to close up here, uh, I think it would be actually a good time to pray if you want to pray well, for can I Can I say something, though, before you close yep. real quick on that? Just to tie it up about yep. God of the impossible, because we yep. kind of never went back to, to – just real quick, just, um, you know, just to remind everybody, no matter how impossible it seems – he is a God of the impossible. Just want to read a few fast, fast sentence, uh, scriptures. Matthew 19, 26, with God, all things are possible. Mark 10, 27, Jesus says with men, it's impossible. But not with God, for with God, all things are possible. Not some things, all things. That ties back to Luke 18, 27, what's impossible with man possible with God. And in Matthew 17, 20, you know, he tells us that we just need faith as small as a mustard seed. And you, we can say to this mountain, move and it shall be moved. Jesus goes on to say, nothing is impossible for you, for us. So, Luke 137 also says, no word from God will fail. No word from God will fail. So no matter what situation you're in, this is what his word says, and it cannot fail. And if you can muster up enough faith, even write a little list of these passages, let this be your prayer. Let this be your confession. No matter how impossible it seems, no, God says opposite. Stand on here. Stand on what you will believe in that word. And all things will come to pass for us if we believe. So, you know, let's not forget what God's capability is. When we believe and we stand on that. So I just wanted to tie in and um, um, 
we brought up about um, our restoration and how I said in the beginning that this seems so impossible and look what the God of the impossible did with Joni and I. And real quick, I mean, a, a minute, Joni, because Tony's going to fuss at us, but let her say real quick what happened with Paul and Mark. That can be said in a few sentences about we, what we discussed about Paul and Mark. Yeah, you know, I mean, no. I, I, and I'll keep it short because I can pretty much wrap that up. Um, oh, yeah. You know, we we see in the book of Acts chapter, I'm, a, I'm trying to get over there right now or as fast as I can, it's, in chapter yeah, 15, 15. Yeah. in chapter 15, um, there came a point where Paul and Barnabas um, said, uh, why don't we go and visit the other cities where we've started churches and let's check on them, see how they're doing. And and says in verse 36, and some days after Paul said into Bar, that was verse 36. In verse 37, it said Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark, but Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Now, we don't know anything that there was nothing in between that. There was a mention of Mark, his sister's son, which Mark is his Mark. But when we see the final words, the dying letter, the that was final Paul words, and Mark. Paul and Mark that had that great contention. Yeah, and whatever that contention was, we know that there's there was a falling out, all right? So we won't get into what that was. But it was so bad that they were, like, so offended that the, it was a sharp contention. So you can just see them yelling at each other. It was so bad that they were like, we don't even want to see each other again. Then you look at the final letter of second, first and second Timothy. First Timothy was the installation of Timothy into the church, right? So. This is a prison letter. He's writing this from prison. And so he says, so after he does all that install, installing him, then he goes into Second Timothy about other things, about perilous times and false teachers and be, what to be aware of. And he's giving instructions to him about what to expect as a church leader. But we see here, after he does that, then he goes into his very personal final words these were his last words and that's paul we're talking about here yeah yeah paul's yeah. last words before before he, he dies and the word that he said was um in verse 11 he says only luke is with me take mark and bring him with thee for he is profitable to me for the ministry and you know when you look at the dying man's words People are always going to remember the words of the dying person, the last words and all the words spoken during the life. And so something had happened that he said, not just bring him back, take, I have Luke with me. Okay. But I need you to bring Mark, take him, Mark. Like, go get him and bring Mark with you for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And so you see this softened heart of love. And something had happened. We don't know whether he went, made it there or not to see him. Um, we only know that he said in his final words, take Mark and bring him with me, with you. He's profitable to me. He so, was literally handing over his mantle to Mark, the one all this contention had happened mm -hmm. with in his last letter. So how amazing is that? Even if Mark never made it there. Even if Paul dies before Mark makes it there, we can probably assume at least Mark found that out. And that is what Paul asked for. Bring Mark. Can you imagine so, so how in Mark the, so, would have felt? So just in closing, you see that God squares things up at the end, you know, and he knows we're human and all these things. But the bottom line is that look at what, it, I mean, could you imagine what Mark's ministry was after the death of Paul? Because in that same chapter, in verse six, just before that, he says, I'm ready to be offered. 
and the time of my departure is at hand, meaning the very next day he would die. And I'm sure so it seems impossible, final impossible months. to mark that this would yeah. ever reunite and look. So yet again. Yeah, that's a really good word. So yeah, Joni, perhaps if you could um, pray for our listeners before we look to close up. I would love to, absolutely. Father in heaven, it is such a privilege. Prayer is a privilege that you've given to us. Lord, I just thank you so much that when you ascended into heaven and you, before you died, you, you, you rent the, you, you, you rent the temple curtain, but you rent your body. And so Lord, we have access with boldness. Lord, we're always being told, come unto me. I believe that if it could be possible that the sign over the door of prayer should be read, come unto me, all ye that are weary. I could just see that written over the door of prayer in heaven. And Lord, we, and you also say, take of me, learn of me, Lord. So you're always asking us to come to you and you're not a God that is so far off or, 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 or monotone, but Lord, you are so interested in everybody's life right now that are listening. And God, I pray and I ask you to touch the lives of every person that you bless them in their homes, that you bless them in their finances, that you lift them up and give them hinds feet to get up upon thine high places, that you fill them with power, that you fill them with courage, that you give them strength, that you give them wisdom, that you make them a cut above, that you make everybody able, Lord God, to be able to prosper in the things, Lord God, that you have blessed us. Even Solomon said that I saw everything under the sun. I had everything I ever wanted. But the only thing I ever saw that was a gift under the sun, that there was no better thing than for a man to go to work, and it could be woman, of course, mankind, and to come home and to eat and to drink and to enjoy his family. This is the gift of God. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would satisfy the needs of people in this sun-scorched land and strengthen their frame. I pray, Lord God, that you make them like well-watered gardens, like springs that never fail. And that, God, that you make them, Lord God, to stand upright in this land and that they would not be overwhelmed by anything that's coming against them. And that their eyes would be opened like the servant of Elijah who said, there is more with us than with them. Because if God be for us, who is it that can be against us? It's God who justifies us. It's God. And Lord, you are our God. You are the God of these people that are listening. You're the God of their home. You're the God of their children. You're the God of the marriages. You're the God of all the earth. And you claim dominion over all heaven and earth. And so, Jesus, I ask you to bring restoration, to bring healing into their lives. And even to open up new doors of opportunity for everybody and that God, you make yourself a people that are not ashamed because you said they that look into the Lord will not be ashamed. Their faces will be lightened. And Lord, there's so much more I could ask you for right now, but I praise the Lord because you know all things. And I praise you, Lord, that you know what to do in each life. So now I rest this prayer upon you, knowing, Lord, that everybody will receive what they have believed you for, because your word can never fail, and you love us so much. And in your precious name, and in your shining name, we pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 So, Joni, can you tell our listeners where they find you on YouTube? Or wherever else? Sure. It's pretty basic. Uh, they can find me at uh, Joni Stahl's Field Notes. It's a YouTube channel. It's pretty basic. <laughs> That's where they can find me. 
Okay, and Brock, um, I will put your email address in the um, the comments. I mean, the description. But perhaps you would maybe you. just want to say it once more um, verbally as well. Yes, it's uh, my email is Haley Brook at Seabridge. That's C E Bridge dot net. And um, like I said, it's um, it 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 takes people to my PayPal, which is under uh, Far and Freedom instead of you know, Brooke Ordway, but, um, I, I appreciate you so much, Tony, for that. And Joni. That's all good. And Haley is spelled H, Haley spelled H-A-L-E-Y. Yes, H-A- That's the way. Yes. Yeah. H-A-L-E-Y, B-R-O-O-K at C-E-B-R-I-D-G-E dot net. Cool. And folks, don't but, forget... Also, um, visit A Minute to Midnight, and like I said at the beginning, make sure you subscribe to us at the website, a minute to midnight.com. Um, that's the best way to know you'll not miss any of our videos and articles and so forth. And we do have a Rumble channel, a YouTube channel, a BitChute channel, and an Apple Podcasts channel as well. And A Minute to Midnight is also run 100% by donations, and we really do greatly appreciate those that help support us. Uh, and you can donate at a minute to midnight.com as well. The music used, I've written, played, and recorded. And if you want to download that, you can find it at a minute to midnight.com also. So, well, guys, it's been really awesome to do this um, show together again after so long. So, thank you so much to Joni Stahl and Brooke Ardwin for being with me again today on the A Minute to Midnight show. And I, you know, I really pray God blesses what you two to do together in the coming weeks and months as well. Thank you. And we'll definitely have to get back together here again sometimes too, for sure. Yeah, and it might be really good to get Holly on as well and do a four-way discussion sometime. Wonderful. That would be yes, great. Yes, and I would like to yeah. real quick, um, Tony didn't ask, but um, real quick, you guys, those who are listening, I would just, um, I'd like to ask you guys if um, um, you could just lift up Tony, um, Tony and her, his wife, Holly. Um, that's all I'll say about it. Um, you know, um, we all we all are going through hardships right now, but um, you know, these married guys, basically still newlyweds, um, Holly moved all the way to New Zealand and, and um, Tony's here really, really trying to work to provide for his, his family and, and his wife and um, loves her so much and and what a great husband and what a great wife holly when you listen i love you with all my heart can't wait to talk to you and um please just lift these guys up in prayer and of course Joni and john her husband as well in her ministry thank you so much brooke that's yeah that's thank awesome. you for that that was beautiful yeah. yeah we miss you holly looking forward to seeing you and uh thanks for having us on this was wonderful yeah. Awesome. Been Thank great. you both as well. Thank you.